With Deshaun Watson being suspended for 11 games this upcoming season, the Browns will need Jacoby Brissett to step up and to keep them in the playoff hunt. Brissett, who signed a one-year deal with the Browns earlier this offseason, started six games for the Dolphins in 2021 and went 2-4. Now, he's tasked with keeping the season alive for a Browns team with serious playoff expectations. Brissett is at his best when he can play as a supporting player in an offense. When the run game is rolling and receivers are getting open, Brissett is more than capable of being a competent game manager. He's reliably accurate and on time, especially with his throws in the short to medium areas of the field, and he loves to target tight ends. In his most recent year as a full-time starter, Brissett threw to tight ends the 8th most among starting quarterbacks that year, and was the 11th most accurate on those throws. Part of the reason why Brissett had so much success with Mike Gesicki in Miami and has had much success with a lot of athletic tight ends in his career is because he knows that one of his best traits is being able to throw with feathery touch, which is why he's comfortable taking shots down the sideline to his tight ends in one-on-one -on -one coverage. He trusts them to make a play on the ball, and it's why David Njoku will be a huge factor for the success of a Jacoby Brissett-led offense. For better or for worse, Brissett is a smart veteran quarterback, and it's obvious from watching his film that he's seen pretty much every trick in the book. Take this play against the Texans from last season. Pre-snap, it's very obvious that the Texans are playing textbook cover one. The defense is spread horizontally with a corner pressed up on each receiver with a single high safety over the top. Really, the only unknown responsibility on this play is the Mike linebacker. In a cover one call, any linebacker that isn't manned up on a receiver is doing one of two things. He's either blitzing, or he's dropping into coverage to play as the hook defender, which would make this coverage a cover one hole. On this play, the Texans' Mike linebacker is dropping into coverage to play as the hook defender, and when Brissett sees that, he knows the Dolphins are in trouble. The Dolphins are running a simple slant flat concept on this play, which unfortunately targets the exact area of the field that cover one hole is best suited to defend. Knowing this, Brissett immediately glances to the right side of the field, which gets the whole linebacker to shuffle just a couple of inches in that same direction, which then allows Mike Gesicki's slant route to come open. That subtle eye manipulation that Brissett is skilled at allows bad play calls against good coverage calls to work out in the offense's favor, which takes the pressure off Stefanski to make the perfect calls all the time. No, Brissett's not going to throw 50-yard bombs every Sunday, and no, he's not going to elevate the players around him like a Mahomes, Brady, or Rodgers does but he's going to have a standard baseline of play of consistency that will allow your skill players like Nick Chubb, Amari Cooper, and Kareem Hunt to become focal points of the offense. But to be quite blunt, there's a reason why Jacoby Brissett has been a career backup for most of his career. He's a conservative, unflashy quarterback who won't necessarily put the ball in harm's way too often, but he won't make that aggressive, tight window throw late in the game, and it's a reason why he hasn't been a full-time starter since 2019. On this play from week 10 of last year, the Dolphins are running a cab concept, which is a three-man deep passing concept designed to attack cover three, which just so happens to be the coverage that the Ravens are in. A cab concept calls for the X receiver to run a post route, in order to clear out the boundary corner and the safety, while the slot receiver runs a crossing route in order to clear out the hook and flat defenders. If all goes according to plan, the dig route from the Z receiver should be open in the vacated space created by the X and slot receivers. When Brissett hits the top of his drop, everything is going to plan. The post route has the attention of the far corner and safety, and both linebackers are jointly covering the crossing route, 
and the dig route is right there for the taking. But Brissett doesn't pull the trigger, and instead he runs toward the sideline for a three yard gain. Yes, throwing the dig route would be considered somewhat of an aggressive throw, considering that Brissett would have to release this ball before the route came open, and it would be an anticipatory throw. But it's a throw that many starting quarterbacks, including Deshaun Watson, make in their sleep. All quarterbacks do better when they are kept clean in the pocket rather than being constantly pressured. You're welcome for that piece of groundbreaking analysis. But Brissett especially struggles under pressure, largely because a lot of it is self-inflicted. And here's a great example of how devastating that trait that quarterbacks have, including Brissett, of inviting pressure when your offensive line did not do anything wrong, can be on an offense, including how many opportunities are missed because of it. The Texans' defense is in a vanilla cover 2 look, which is a coverage that is vulnerable in the areas between the safeties. Luckily for Brissett, the Dolphins have a perfect play to exploit that exact area with a go-flat concept. The design of a go-flat concept against cover 2 is to throw to the go route when the flat defender pushes up field to cover the running back, who, or whoever's running the flat route, and before the safety can react to cover the go route. This is what's called a hole shot into what's called the honey hole of cover 2. When Brissett receives the snap and reaches the top of his drop back, two Texans are already right there to seal off the pocket. As you can see, there is a clean area of the pocket for Brissett to just step up into, but he doesn't have the calm demeanor in the face of chaos. He instead panics, seeing the immediate pressure, even though a lot of that is just an illusion and he would there would be no pressure if he simply stepped up. He throws to the check down option and misses a 15 yard gain that would normally be quite routine. Missing 15 yards on a single play doesn't win or lose a game, but with the frequency in which these types of plays happen with Brissett, it really can start to add up. Brissett doesn't have a great pocket presence, which puts a lot of pressure on the offensive line to be perfect. And as we said, even if they are perfect on a play, Brissett still might invite pressure anyways due to his tendency to drift backwards. Brissett truly is what he is. He's a conservative, decently accurate, veteran quarterback who isn't going to wow you with his arm or his mobility or his ability to create off-script plays. It's why it's very safe to say that if Watson was suspended for the whole year, there was virtually no chance that Brissett would lead the Browns to the Super Bowl, no matter how talented this roster is. Brissett is more than capable of leading the Browns to wins against most NFL teams just because of the talent on the Browns roster. But when the Browns eventually play the powerhouses of the AFC, like the Chargers and the Ravens and the Bengals on their early schedule, their roster talent is more or less equal, but the difference in QB talent will be just too much to overcome most of the times. But all he has to do is keep the Browns afloat until Watson comes back, which means just win the games you have to. There is a proven formula to win with Brissett and other quarterbacks of his kind of tier. One, you rely on the run game and play action pass, something the Browns are already well suited to do as that's Kevin Stefanski's exact scheme. Two, you keep him out of obvious passing situations like third and long, and you do that by sticking with short to medium passing concepts that set up manageable third downs. And three, you scheme up one-on-one -on -one matchups for your bigger receivers like David Njoku, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and Amari Cooper, and let Brissett throw calculated jump balls when you need those chunk plays. It's not a formula that's going to beat the best of the best, but it can keep the season alive for when Watson returns in Week 13 against the Texans.